Hey, I'm Craig. Welcome back to Fight the Flat Earth, the channel that takes stupidity on a nice long drive through the woods and then comes back alone. Today on episode three of Flurf Start Idiots, we're taking a look at allegedly Dave, or, or possibly Dave. Maybe Dave. Dave Murphy is a flat earther that has taken stupidity to whole new heights, even outside of flat earth. Let's take a quick look at his channel. Right, what have we got? Telepathy. <laughs> good, good start there. Free energy devices, oh my god. Ah, oh, he's a breatharian as well. What's that? Urine therapy? No, surely not. Oh, yes. My god. He drinks his own piss. I think I might need some help with this one. Two sex. Hey man, it's Craig, yeah. Oh, all good. Yeah, have you, um, have you heard of Allegedly Dave? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, the one that drinks his own piss, that's right. Yeah, have you got anything you fancy saying about him for my channel? Oh, that'd be brilliant, mate. Thanks very much. Speak to you later. Cheers. What? I'm sorry, but I can't deal with all this stupid on my own. We're living on a disc, floating through space, with a tiny sun. <laughs> Right, so allegedly Dave, the guy that named himself like even he isn't sure he believes who he is. Dave thinks he understands the world so much better than everyone else, that he's seen through all the lies and deceit that he's been told, that he's got this special knowledge that only he really understands. Obviously, such a great mind must have a great grip on how the universe works, which is why at a recent Flat Earth conference, he decided to take to the stage to debunk a demonstration of gravity. Well, instead of just letting go of one, what if I give it a sideways push? Now it orbits. Now it's losing energy, which wouldn't happen uh, in, uh, in the solar system, right? Not noticeably. There's some perturbations from other planets and things, but this one does lose energy and spirals in. If I don't push it as hard, it will do an ellipse for a while anyway. And... So... Does anyone see a problem with this? Well, no, Dave, I don't see a problem, but I bet that you do. Well, the problem I see is that th that model includes droppity. Yeah? Droppity? Man, I, uh, I must have missed that when I was studying before. I just have a quick look through one of my old physics books. Droppity, droppity. No, droppity. Doesn't seem to be in here. Einstein got rid of this mysterious force. Yeah? There's no force now. Yeah? Wait, Einstein could do that? He could just remove forces from existence? I knew the guy was smart, but come on. Okay, we'll do a little scenario, all right? If we had that trampoline thing, okay, exact same trampoline thing, and we had it in a weightless environment, not that one exists, but, you know, we'll assume a weightless environment, okay? Well, the bowling ball or whatever it is in the middle, well, we can't have that because it wouldn't make a depression. There'd be nothing there to pull it down, right? Right? Look, Dave, not even your audience have any idea what you're going on about. So if you put the marble in this weightless environment, you put the marble on the edge of the dip, it would stay there. Well, I mean, you could say that. You'd be wrong, but, but you could say it. The curvature of space-time is what's making it move. Like if you put a ball on a hill, it's going to start rolling without anyone pushing it. You know, because of gravity. Right, let's take another look at this channel, see what else we've got. Ah, yeah, the breatharian stuff. I found the first day to be very actually, very difficult actually. <laughs> I, um, I, I felt hungry. Well Dave, a breatharian isn't supposed to eat anything. They exist purely on sunlight and air or whatever. So are you surprised at the fact that you're hungry? What else you got? An open letter to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh man, this should be good. I'm gonna go and prepare myself for this onslaught of stupidity. In the meantime, I've brought in the cavalry to back me up. Hello everyone, I'm the creaky book. Creaky blinder. Only joking. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Fight the Flat Earth for having me on. It's my full intention to make a video on allegedly Dave. He is on my radar. Let's give you some thoughts on him now. Oh, and you're a regular Rhodes Scholar. Where, where was it you graduated from again? Hmm? The University of Duh. Well, I've been drinking urine now for... Drinking urine. My morning routine is basically... Um, I would you know, get up 
um, weigh my glass. Right, well this isn't going the way I thought it was going to. As if it's not bad enough, he's a flat earther. He's also drinking his own p I hope he let it go cold first. Whoa. It's, it's all fraud, it's all fake. Um, pretty much everything NASA puts out is, is fraudulent. So this is Dave on Late Night with Malenko. Obviously a genius idea, invite the flat earther onto a chat show. What could possibly go wrong? Um, nobody has actually um, really gone all the way across Antarctica. Apart from this guy, of course. Yeah, now... And this guy as well. Come on, Dave, it's not hard. I found that out by typing into Google who has crossed Antarctica. Even a flat earther can do it. Who, who could, you know, assemble the resources to make an expedition and completely, you know, go across and chart Antarctica and make a name for themselves, being the first person to do that. What do you mean, being the first person? I just... Yeah, but nobody ever does. I just showed you two. The other thing that's uh, about the spinning Earth is looking at the stars. And now he's going to go off onto a massive rant about the stars and the spin of the Earth. I don't care about anything you've got to say, Dave. All right, Dave. But I do have a question. You acknowledge that there are stars, but space is fake. So where are the stars? Now, um, directly above the axis of spin is the pole star, Polaris. Okay, um, directly over the North Pole. And um, we're told that the reason that all the stars spin around the, uh, the, the North Star is because the, the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour. And the reason we're told that is because it is. And then he just goes on and on some more about stars that are in space, which doesn't exist. So how can they be in space? But anyway, whatever. I've always wondered as well, what, what got Dave interested in in the flat earth the thing that really um ah right here we go he's gonna tell us now the thing that really got me interested was the girls or maybe the boys the globe is is spinning at a thousand miles an hour right that's nowhere near as exciting as i hoped it was going to be dave so dave i need to bring this clip to a close have you got anything to say if everybody realized how special we all are we all know how special you flat earthers are, Dave. You don't need to tell us. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. You can find my channel. Just type the Creaky Blinder or Being Opinionated into YouTube and you'll find me. I'm going to hand you back now to fight the flat earth. Hopefully next time I see you, it'll be on my channel. Take care, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for that, bud. Please do subscribe to him and tell him that Fight the Flat Earth sent you. The last video by possibly Dave that we're going to take a look at is an open letter to Neil deGrasse Tyson where he manages to give us an even larger display of stupid than normal in an easy to mock list. I would like to ask you 12 questions and give you the opportunity to answer them respectfully using simple, easy to understand concrete terms that you are so famous for. Because I'm just an ordinary bloke. Dave, you bathe in and drink your own piss. You're about as far away from an ordinary guy as we can possibly get. Nowhere near as smart as you are. Stop the presses guys, allegedly Dave says he's nowhere near as smart as Neil deGrasse Tyson. I mean, who knew? Apparently we see a horizon about five miles away. So in five miles there's enough curvature to see a ship disappear. Yet I cannot detect that curve over ten miles. Because I can see five miles to my left and five miles to my right. So I've got an uninterrupted ten mile span in which I should see enough curve to hide two ships. But I don't. You're comparing seeing things on an x-axis to seeing things on a y-axis. They aren't going to appear the same. When looking at 10 miles, what you're seeing based on if you do the math for a ball with a circumference of 25,000 miles, you get an arc of 0 0.144 degrees. I know math is scary, but if you really try hard, I'm sure you can... What am I saying? No, you, you probably can't do it. Don't even bother trying. Question four. How are we breathing right now? Um, like, like this? How can there be a high pressure system next to a low or negative pressure system without movement from high to low? Man, a typical flurf misunderstanding. Look, gravity pulls the atmosphere towards the planet, which means that's where the highest pressure is. 
As you raise in altitude, the pressure decreases until you get high enough that the pressure is one atmosphere less than it was at sea level. Question five. Is the Earth very, very small or is the sun very, very near? No, the sun is 93 million miles away. Just check the link. Question nine. What is the International Space Station flying over? Earth, Dave. The ISS is flying over Earth. Observe water behaving like this and like this, but you say it behaves like this. So why doesn't it behave like this? Well, that last clip just proves that Dave doesn't even understand the model which he is arguing against. And with that, I think it's safe to say that allegedly Dave has been smashed. Thanks to the help from Creaky Blinders, you saved my life, mate. Make sure you guys subscribe to him and tell him that FTFE sent you. I'll be back on Saturday with episode four of Explaining Simple Stuff to Flirt with the Moon. And then I've got my open challenge to all Flat Earthers live debate, moderated by Conspiracy Cats. I'll see you guys then. Remember, stupidity is not right. Fight the Flat Earth. We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Yeah.